Meet the all new and updated Gus. This is Gus 2.0 and trust me he's way cooler than before. Now if you missed my last video, let me quickly catch you up on what this little guy is all about. Gus is basically your adorable desktop buddy with these super expressive eyes. He even blinks randomly just to make him feel more alive. Behind his head are a bunch of sensors that keep tabs on the temperature, humidity and air quality around him. And here's the cool part. His eye levels actually tell you how comfy your room is. So if the air quality is not great or the humidity is off or the temperature is just not right, his eyelids start to droop and he gets a little gloomy. But this new version of Gus has got a whole new look with a cute 3D printed body plus some awesome new features. He now has 4 levels of eyelid drooping so you get a better sense of how comfortable your room is. And there's a hidden touch sensor on top of his head. Whenever you're wondering why he's feeling down, just give him a little tap and he'll show you exactly what the sensors are reading. Honestly, he just looks so adorable sitting on your desk giving you those cute little looks while you work. Alright, let me show you exactly how I brought this little guy to life. So the first step in bringing Gus to life was getting his body designed in Fusion 360. Now before diving into the details, I wanted to get a feel of his overall size. So I started sketching out some really rough shapes of all the electronic components that will be going inside him. To make absolutely sure everything would fit perfectly, I did a little online scavenging and downloaded CAD models of all the electronics from GrabCAD. My idea for Gus was a big head to house the larger components and a cute little body for the microcontroller. And you know what, this look actually turned out to be very cute. I carefully positioned all those digital components within Gus's body to make sure everything fit in perfectly. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a CAD model for the air quality sensor so I had to take my best guess at its size. To add to the final look, I made some tiny hands and feet. Finally, I exported the whole design and sent it off to be 3D printed. And honestly, for my very first time designing something specifically for 3D printing, it looks pretty good. You can find all the files linked right below the like button. Now let's talk about the brains and senses of Gus. The electronics for this project were generously sent over by Seed Studio. For detecting air quality, we are using their Groove air quality sensor. To measure humidity and temperature, we have the DHT22 sensor. For Gus's eyes and displaying sensor information, we have got a Groove 1.12 inch white OLED display. We also have a capacitive touch sensor for interaction. And finally, to tie everything together and act as Gus's brain, we are using a Shao ESP32C3. One of the great things about using Groove products from Seed Studio is their Groove connector system. Everything simply plugs in which is going to save us a lot of soldering later on. The first thing I noticed after 3D printing was the air quality and temperature sensors weren't quite fitting into their design slots. Well, looks like my first design wasn't perfect after all. But thankfully, it was a pretty straightforward fix. I just used a hacksaw blade to carefully remove the lower sections of the slots, specifically below where the groove connectors would go. This also created some extra space for the sensor wires to bend back inside the housing. Thinking about it, it might actually be more convenient if Seed Studio had placed the groove connectors on the opposite side of the PCB. That seems to make more sense. Alright, let's get started with the soldering. First, I'm going to cut two of the groove connectors roughly in half. Then using wire strippers, we'll expose the ends of all these wires. For three of these connectors, we are going to snip off the white wire. It won't be required by our sensors. But for the last connector, the one for our OLED display, we need all four wires because it uses the I2C communication protocol. Now I know it looks like a lot of wires, but don't worry. We'll take it step by step. 
Let's start by soldering bare red and black wires to the V, USB and GND pins on the microcontroller. Next, we'll grab the yellow wires from those three connectors where we removed the white wire and solder them to D0, D1 and D2. Then for the OLED connector, we'll solder its white wire to D4 and its yellow wire to D5. Finally, we're going to connect all the red wires together and all the black wires together. If you're feeling a bit lost, take a look at this circuit diagram while soldering. To keep everything organized, I've labeled each connector with masking tape, indicating what component it will connect to later. The good news is we don't need to do any more soldering. We can simply plug in our components using the connectors, just matching them up with the labels. Before we jump back into the build, I want to give a quick shout out to the amazing sponsor of this video, Seed Fusion. I've genuinely been a fan of Seed Studio products for a while now. If you're a maker like me, you can find almost any electronics you need for your project from Seed. Not just that, they even provide professional grade PCBs and assembly services. And for those of you with entrepreneurial ideas, their co-create program is something that truly stands out. If you've ever dreamed of selling your electronic creations but felt overwhelmed by the business side, this is a fantastic opportunity. Check out the link in the description to learn more about what Seed Fusion has to offer. At this stage, I went ahead and uploaded the code to the microcontroller to test if everything worked as expected. Now getting the code right was quite a process. It involved a lot of trial and error to get it working smoothly. I won't be diving too deep into the coding details right now as that would make this video too long. However, if you are interested in some of the details of how I figured it out, you can check out my previous video. But in a nutshell, the code's job is to figure out how comfortable the environment is. It does this by looking at the air quality, humidity and temperature data from the sensors. The code has preset comfortable ranges for each of these readings. Then it checks how many of the sensor readings are currently outside of the comfortable zone. Based on this, it calculates a comfort score. The score ranges from 0 to 4. A score of 0 means the best comfort level while the score of 4 indicates worst comfort level. Now it might seem a bit backwards at first but the score basically indicates the height of the eyelids in the downward direction. So a higher score will mean the eyelid is lower. Now that everything is working as expected, we can start to assemble everything. To get a cleaner look for the face and hide all the components we've tucked inside, I cut a small square from an old x-ray sheet. Placing it on the display, you can see it instantly looks much cleaner. It does reduce the brightness of the display quite a bit. It's something I'm keeping in mind and I might experiment with different materials in the future. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to know about it in the comments. To attach this x-ray sheet, I used rubber adhesive to glue it to the front of the head. And then I stuck on the OLED display using double-sided tape. Now it's time to attach the legs to the body. Make sure you place the microcontroller in the body first. There's a perfectly sized opening at the back of the body that gives us easy access to the USB-C port. This will be useful for uploading code later and for powering the project. With the body attached to the head, we can now start plugging in all our electronics. As you can see, I've used double-sided tape to stick the touch sensor right onto the top of the head. Moving right along, we can similarly plug in the air quality sensor and the DHT22 sensor. Then we'll use double sided tape again to stick these sensors to their slot on the back panel. Now we'll use rubber adhesive to glue the back panel to the head. Make sure all the wires are tucked neatly inside and have enough space. I know having wires sticking out of the back isn't the cleanest look and that's why I prefer groove connectors on the other side. However, I have to admit having these wires visible does give it a bit of a cool high tech feel. Finally, we can glue on the tiny hands and ears. I painted the ears with grey acrylic paint for some contrast. 
and now plug in a USB-C power cable and GUS 2.0 is ready. I have to say he turned out absolutely adorable. There's something about that big head and those cute expressive eyes that give him this wonderful cartoonish charm. And those random blinks really do bring him to life. But honestly, my favorite part is still petting him on the head and instantly seeing that sensor data. It's incredibly satisfying. I find myself doing it way more often than I probably should. Now GUS 2.0 is just the beginning and there's so much potential for improvement and new features. That's why I've decided to open source the entire project. You can find all the CAD models over on Thingiverse and the code and build instructions on Hackaday. I've put all the links down in the description below. If you've enjoyed this project and appreciate the effort that went into bringing GUS 2.0 to life, please consider subscribing to the channel. Subscribing is the best way to support more projects like this and helps me keep creating content you love. And if you really loved it, smashing that like button and sharing this video with anyone who might be interested would mean a world to me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.